today we're going to talk about scripted REST APIs. So what I have up here in my PDI is the scripted REST API table. A scripted REST API is basically a web service that you can build and configure to allow external systems to talk to ServiceNow. Why would you do that? Well, for one, you may not have access to Integration Hub, and there may come a time where the import sets or data sources provided to ServiceNow or even the endpoints directly to the tables are not robust enough or give too much access and you want to do something that you have more control over. A scripted REST API is perfect for that. For example, if you ever come across webhooks, if you want to subscribe to events in an external system, maybe to generate tickets of some sort, if you want to incorporate that webhook into ServiceNow, a scripted REST API is perfect for that. You can process the JSON package or payload however you would like. If you're dealing with some funky authentication, you can handle it through scripting. It's really versatile. There are also instances where maybe you don't want to give important information or access to the entire table to an external system. So you may want to curate the type of response that they're getting. I know inbound web services, for example, the response that you get once you use that API is not extremely robust. So maybe you want to give more information or maybe it's a get function and you just want to pass back certain fields and not give the whole table access. You know, there, there are multiple reasons that you may want to use a scripted REST API, but mainly uh, what I use it for is when I need ultimate flexibility or I need to really tailor the response. So for today's purposes, I'm just going to use a simple example. We have an external system that our managers use. And every time somebody requests software, they go in and check the reports to see if it's available in the first place. So behind the scenes, what that portal, doing, the portal is doing is just tapping into ServiceNow to check the model first, if it exists, if an entitlement exists for it, and if one does to see if there are allocations available, then it reports that number back. So let's go ahead and build that API. We're going to give it a name. We're going to give it an API uh, ID. This is auto-populated based off the name. If I want to give it something different, I can. The namespace is also auto-populated. This is derived from a property because this is global. If it were any other scoped application, the namespace for that scoped application would show here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And now you can see that the API ID and the API namespace are both incorporated into the base API path. So this is the endpoint that we're going to provide to external systems. We need to add more to this endpoint in terms of specific resources that the endpoint can, can use to get information from ServiceNow. So let's go ahead and create a resource. I'm going to give my resource a unique name because uh, you could create as many resources as you want for your API, really. I'm going to call it get allocations. It's going to be a get method, and I'm going to fill out the rest of the endpoint path. So when you call this endpoint, you want to call get allocations. And also, I want to pass in a variable, which will be the model name that we'll be looking up. So now it's time to write the script that will process either a payload or just the request from the, the get uh, call. But I will point down here that we have some security. So if you want to enforce authentication and enforce the ACLs, you can use these checkboxes. I don't recommend unchecking these unless you plan to handle them in the script here above. If you leave these unchecked, then the endpoint is wide open to the internet and that is not a good idea. So please leave these checked unless you plan to handle that in the script. So let's go ahead and write this script. The first thing I want to do is get the model, get that using the request object. Uh, there's also a response object you'll see. And I'm going to get the path params and I know it's called model. And I'm going to check if anything was sent. And if not, then I'm going to go ahead and return an error. So now I'll use the response object 
to set an error. This is one of ServiceNow's handy little error objects that they, they provide to you. So I'm gonna use a not found error, I'm gonna provide my message. No model RL. I'm going to set my status to 404. I'm going to return. That will be the end of the script if no model is sent. If I do have a model, then we'll go ahead and query the entitlements table. We're looking at the entitlement. So we're going to add a simple query to see if the software model associated with this entitlement has the same name as the name that was sent in. We're gonna be looking at the display name. We'll query that. Now, if there's nothing, there are no entitlements at all, then we're gonna return an error. And it's gonna be just like this one up here, except let's use more specific error saying no entitlement. So right, and then if we do find entitlement or more, let's get a count going. So while we have those entitlements, let's go ahead and count. Available. Let's get a positive response here. That body to a JSON object where we return the count. Message of success. There's our script. Let's go ahead and test this in the REST API Explorer. So if I come down here to explore the REST API, it's going to take me to my endpoint that I just created. So this would be the endpoint that you would provide to the external system. They would have to pass in the model. So let's go with Adobe Systems Photoshop and let's test it out. Waiting for the response, taking a while. Let me go back to my script real quick. Yep. That and save and all right, so it's saved. Let's go ahead, try that again. This with Adobe, hit send, using on our response. All right, thing went through this time. So, if we look here, we get a 200 response, and yep, we get a count and a message of success. So if I enter something that's not in the system and hit send, now we get our 404 not found and we get no entitlement with model, whatever that is, was found. So it looks like we're working and that in a nutshell is a scripted REST API. Thanks for watching.